Welcome, everybody. This is Taiji Alchemy, and I'm Rick Barrett. It's uh, a wee bit of alchemy, actually, is the title. So uh, uh, tonight, we're going to talk about a few things. Um, uh, first of all, uh, we got a question came up in, in the, the, the preliminary, and uh, but then we'll move into uh, talking about stillness and motion, motion and stillness. And also the um, further adventures in opening the jade pillow gate. So uh, okay. we'll uh, got a few things to talk about there. But first of all, Sandy, you had a you had a question. So yeah, um, do you have any thoughts on sinking the chi in the dantian? Is it more of a, a physical thing, or is it just an energetic thing, or a breathing thing? Uh, that's a good question. So the question is sinking the chi to the dantian. So. The classics are full of that, and that's, uh, I think it's, it's very important. It's something that I don't talk about a lot, um, I guess, because there's so many opinions about it that I generally avoid that particular briar patch. But uh, um, I will give you my interpretation. Um, mm. And um, my experience. So going back, oh, 30 odd years ago, I was uh, talking to a, um, a Qigong master about this and saying, hey, I can't find my Dantian. I, you know, I'm trying to feel it and I don't, I'm trying to sink my chi there. And, and he kind of laughed and said, you know, you're like a man who's standing next to the ocean looking for water. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, like, click is one of those Zen moments where, you know, like, oh, oh, you know, yes. So the, the key there is that it's so insubstantial, the, uh, the, there's an insubstantial part of the Dantian that is so insubstantial, it is so yin that it, you, uh, you, you don't perceive it in the way that you perceive things in a substantial way. So, but there is another side to the Dantian, which I believe um, helps us overcome that hurdle and that is the um, Master uh, Yang Fu Kui. Um, he talked about it. He says that it's not a point. And this is it's oftentimes interpreted as a point, like you know, the, uh, the Qi high point uh, is the, the Dan Tian. And in actuality, um, it's a, um, uh, he says that in his family tradition, it's the whole, whole lower abdomen is the, is the Dantian. So he, the whole pelvic bowl is the Dantian. So that takes it out of that. So it, I think both can be true, that there, you can have like a, a center of it and center just like we center on the ball of the foot as a, as a target, we can the chi high point, which is like just uh, a couple of fingers below the navel and a couple of fingers in is considered to be like the center of it. But we can also have it as the, the whole of that, that pelvic bowl. And he said his uh, great uncle used to say that, uh, uh, sink your dantian to your knees. And so to imagine that you're, you're dropping that whole area. So it's not just a physical location, but there's a uh, uh, an energetic one there too. There's a so the the idea of sinking it down. So in terms of the the physicality of it, it from, from what I've been reading recently too, it it's it has more to do with breath, chi as breath, which is a um, you know definitely one of the the uh, the definitions of it and breathing, using your diaphragm to press down on the, the lower abdomen and then keep on going all the way to the hui yin, which is at the perineum or at the, uh, at the, at the base of the, uh, of the torso. And so if you do that, if you drop it all the way down, you bring your breath and you just do that. Just, let's just try that right now. So as you inhale, feel, avoid the, uh, the tendency to allow the chest to expand, just keep the chest relaxed and just keep, as you inhale, just keep pressing down. So there's more and more pressure going onto the, 
the, uh, the lower abdomen until you actually feel it at the base of the, uh, of the torso there in the, at the perineum, you know, so, and breathe. So inhale. And hold it there for a second and just feel that at the perineum and then exhale. So what we've done here is we've used the breath to activate, you know, a very powerful energy center. The the hui yin point is 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 the most yin part of the tor the torso. It's the foundation of of the uh, both the ren and du vessels, and also the penetrating vessel as well. So that if you connect up to there at that yin point, then it allows the energy to to circulate very freely. So the uh, inact, so the idea of sinking the chi into the dantian, so if you breathe in so that you feel that, feel the, the pressure on the lower, the, the lower abdomen, including in your, into your back, allow it to expand into the kidney area as well. And just feel that whole area expanding. So then that's the substantial part. That's the do. You know, that's something that we can feel and touch and, and sense. And then if you do that, what follows is the yin chi accumulates there. And then that builds up and then it'll also feed your kidney jing and allows the energy to circulate throughout the internal organs. So the kidneys then feed the liver, which then feeds the heart, which then feeds the spleen, which then feeds the lungs, which goes back to the kidneys. And you get this, this cycle, and which is replicated in the seasons, where you, the seasons follow that same pattern. So we want to get that circulation going. We should talk about that some point to getting the um, getting that that cycle going but uh, for, for right now the idea of, of chi sinking the chi into the dantian we have the substantial aspect which is the breath allowing the breath to expand that area and to to bring more fullness to that and then we have the insubstantial part which is the accompanying chi that uh that locates there, so it allows that to, to fill up your your kidney jing, and uh, and you start to uh, it um, gives you more vitality. Does that work for you, Sandy? That was perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, good. So that's uh, that's my yeah, my take on it. Um, but it's one of those things too that uh, you can explore for your whole life, and you know. Ask me again another couple of years and I'll probably have a different answer, but uh, that's where I'm at right now. Cool. Yeah. Um, anybody else have a question uh, on that uh, on that topic? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, I lost my picture, but what I would like to ask is when you take that breath in, how much force do you uh, used to bring the air down? Um, that's a good question. And by that, I, how much force? So the, it's more of a leading rather than a forcing. Ah. Oh, so I by, see. So the, the, the key to it is to, to bypass the pre-conscious trigger which activates the, the contraction of the intercostal muscles in the chest. So, and where most of us tend to breathe, we tend to breathe thoracically. Mm -hmm. And so you breathe down and there's a point where you say the, the diaphragm meets resistance. It pushes down to create a vacuum in the in the chest. So as it meets resistance from the internal organs, then the, there's an, a thing that, uh, that gets triggered, a subconscious impulse that, uh, 
that says, okay, that's uncomfortable. And then allow, it tells the intercostal muscles to contract and therefore to uh, fill up the chest and uh, fill up the lungs. So uh, to be a, a chest breathing. So by consciously bypassing that and you're going, you breathe and you notice that point where you want to shift over into thoracic breathing, you say, no, no, we're gonna keep going. And you breathe in a little more and a little more and a little more. And uh, then you get to, uh, uh, you create more capacity. Um, who was it, uh, was an actress, um, I was talking the other day, the one, uh, one was in Titanic. Uh, um, anyway, she was she was in a, in a for a movie. She was training, and she had to spend a whole lot of time underwater. They shot a whole scene underwater, and she developed this capacity to be able to stay underwater. I think she said her best was uh, seven minutes and fourteen seconds. I believe is wow. Yeah. <laughs> so the whole time she's acting, you know, while she's doing the doing this scene while sitting there, you know, for over seven minutes, you know, and she had to, she learned to be able to have that capacity. So it's something that we are, we can go considerably beyond what we consider to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I think with some benefit to, uh, to expanding your your breathing capacity. And particularly for those of us who happen to be getting older, which I think includes most of us, and uh, we, um, if you want to get older, you know, it's good to be able to keep breathing. And uh, uh, so, uh, the the more oxygen and the quality of the oxygen also is uh, is important. So, how much of that's getting into your blood? Yes. Okay. So moving on, unless anybody has another question on that. Nope. We're good. Okay. I'm get my producer told me no. No more. No more questions. Moving on. So <laughs> talking about um, uh, yes, the uh, Jade Pillowgate. Further adventures in the Jade Pillowgate, and that's uh, as you recall, that's you know this area here at the base of the skull. The Jade pillows themselves are right right about here on the the bones. They kind of straddle that that area, but the uh, the Yu Chen, the, we want to focus on that area just below the, the occiput, the, this bone right here at the back of your head. And um, so the, to do that, we want to reach upward with the crown. So the crown, a lot of times people uh, talk about hanging from a thread from the top of the head, which puts us about right here, and it doesn't work. But if you, what the classics talk about, talk about the crown of the head. So if you find your, that, that, um, uh, that hair whirl there, where the, uh, uh, the posterior fontanelle is, you find that that centers the, the crown, the crown is that. So you feel that and you reach upward with that. And one thing that um, I was just reading from, uh, Cheng Man Ching, he's talking about, he says to get the, the occiput vertical. So if you're reaching with the, with the top of your head, your occiput is gonna be at an angle. Whereas if you reach with the crown of your head, it's gonna be vertical. When you verticalize your, your occiput, you open the jade pillow gate. And what happens then is you get the Jing Shen, the spirit of vitality, which uh, he calls uh, spiritual energy, spiritual force that comes with the uh, um, comes with. Uh, I saw that Andrew. That's very clever. <laughs> um, uh, uh, so you see, uh, with the new one getting the, the, that vertical, then it credit you, rather than dropping the chin, you just tuck it in. So, so rather than going down like that, you just pull it back like that, open up the, the that. So you get mm -hmm. this vitality that comes out of that. 
And just try it right now. Just reach with that and just breathe into your Dantian and feel into just that the energy that immediately happens whenever you whenever you you open up that that gate and it feeds your brain it lengthens your spine and also the dural tube which is a uh, uh, surrounds the spine in the brain and has your cerebral spinal fluid in it so you take the kinks out of that and your everything gets nurtured everything flows a lot more smoothly whenever you do that so whenever I mean, do it a hundred times a day, do it a thousand times a day. Just every time you think of it, just kind of, because you've got decades of practice of doing otherwise. And the, if given a, an unimpeded nature, you're going to be kind of getting more and more like this as you get older, unless you do something to change that. And so by actually reaching with the Niwan, not hanging, but reaching. And a very important distinction to be made here, and that is that there is no tension in that. You're not, you're just allowing this sort of, it's, um, I like to think of it as like a vine winding its way upward, reaching for the sun. So there's a, mm, like this, Rather than pushing, you're just, ah, you're allowing that to extend upward. You're lengthening. And as a, uh, it's a, as a process, you know, it's, it's done, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't stop in a, in a week or a day or a week or a month or even a year. It's something that I've been doing for, gosh, about 30 years now. And I still have to remind myself to uh, to reach, but every time I do, I get this hit of juju. I get you know a hit of Jing Shen, which you know is its own reward. It's not something that oh, if I do this for thirty years, then I'll get a payout. No, no, you get the payout every time you do it. Mm. So it's like. Mm. And if you can quiet your mind to be able to just feel into that, you'll be able to notice that, oh, there's something changes energetically just by opening your jade pillow gate. Okay, so that's uh, that's uh, that's the story on that. Any questions on that? You want to give me a gallery? Okay, everybody good on that? Yes. Okay, good, good. All right. So you want to keep that and just remind yourself, you know, as you're doing any of the exercises we're doing together, any form you're doing, anything else, just yet another reason to open your jade pillow gate. Um, so the, um, the other thing was stillness and motion, motion and stillness. So this is one of those things that is, um, uh, I've heard it for a long time. And I just want to give you my insights into into that because there's a lot of different opinions about it. And the way I, uh, the way I see it is the, the, when you get into a, a stillness, a let's say emotionless posture, then you tune into the, all the activity that's happening inside at all the levels. Your blood is flowing, your breathing, your, the chi is moving around. And as you do that, as you quiet, and you go into a still posture, you feel into all the activity that's happening inside. And then when you move, you want to carry that stillness with you. You wanted that, the, there's a, it's, I liken it to uh, the eye of a hurricane. So that mm. whenever you are moving, you are calm and centered. But the classics talk about it being the energy is excited and excitable. So um, 
a lot of people do Tai Chi. I just want to relax. I just want to calm everything down. But that's actually not what we're what we're going for. We want for the your your Shen spirit to be calm and centered, but your chi to be excited and excitable. You know, they talk about like, it's like a, a cat ready to pounce or a hawk ready to, to attack. That's, that's what your Taiji should be like. So there's the energy is, 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 is revved up, but you are this still point in, in the center. And so, hmm. and the more still you get, the closer you can approximate the mystery that animates it all. So you get the, uh, you get this, um, you're able to draw upon the source of the energy. Because in the, in the Taoist model that, that non-being is the mother of being. And whenever we move into that stillness, we start to resonate more with the non-being part, which then creates more being, paradoxically. So um, we, in practice, let's, uh, let's, let's do some of that. Would you stand up? So first we're just gonna go into a stillness. So feel the balls of your feet. Allow your weight to just kind of spread out throughout your feet, but you wanna set your knees so that they're pressing down on the balls of the feet. Just centered over that. The balls of the feet are the bullseye. Your knees are unlocked. You reach with your knee wand point, open the jade pillow gate. Relax your lower back and allow your, uh, your coccyx to drop. Don't force anything, just allow it. And then go back and, and feel into the balls of your feet again, because you may have made an, uh, an adjustment there whenever you relax like that. Reach out slightly with your elbows, opening the shoulder joints. Feel that elbow chin. Point your index fingers and feel Place the tip of your tongue on the, behind your teeth on the roof of your mouth. And breathe through your nose. And as you inhale, feel your diaphragm pressing down on your abdomen. All the way down to the hui in, hold and exhale. Feel yourself releasing down. Spiral down to the left, spiral down to the right, just to get to release the qua. So you're getting more sun qua. So the body is still now. And tune into the activity, the motion that's happening inside. You've got about a 70 trillion cells and they're all buzzing away. And there's a constant 
energy exchange occurring just to keep everybody going. And you're discarding billions of cells every second and creating new ones. Feel your breath. Feel the circulation of your blood. Feel the pulsing, tingling vibrations in your fingers. Feeling the motion and stillness. Point through index fingers. And very slowly rotate your forearms so the palms turn outward. And just feel when all the activity is happening, but also feel the stillness. with your palms facing forward. Spread your fingers a little bit, reach out. Feel the connection from your feet to your fingers, to the crown of your head, to your Dantian. And then slowly rotate back. Feeling the motion, feeling the stillness. Feel the energy getting excited and excitable. At the same time, look at your mind and notice that you're in the gap between thoughts. You're in the still place. Bring your hands up to your chest. Reach with your elbows. Feel the motion, feel the stillness. Your right hand comes up your center line your left hand presses down. Rotate your right hand so it's pressing up and sink into your legs, into your quad. Press down, press up and reach, really open up. Breathe. And slowly come down, right hand rotates, comes down, left hand comes up. Press up with your left hand, palm up, right hand, palm down, sink, 
really soon, very relaxed, sinking into the structure of your body, into the connective tissue. You're not pushing away from the earth. You're allowing that earth chi to rise, to enter through the bubbling well, and circulate through your body. Right hand comes up, left hand comes down. Reach, press, really elongate, feel the lengthening of the connective tissue as you do this. Hand down, left hand up. Rotate and press. Right hand comes up. Left hand comes down and turn to your right. Reach up and out with your right hand. Reach back behind you with your left hand. Lengthen. Breathe. Feel the stillness, feel the motion. Right hand comes down, rotate. Turn to the left. Feel yourself loading up on your left leg has become su substantial here. Reach with your left hand, reach with your right hand, elongate. Breathe. Turn. Reach, open. Your right arm, right leg is substantial now. Turn. Now step out with your right foot. Reach with your right hand, left hand reaches behind you. Straighten your back leg. Reach. Sung, sink into that right leg as you do that into your qua. Good. Now pivot on your left heel, turn. Reach with the left hand, reach with the right. Notice how vertical my knee is, it's right over the ball of the foot. Of the weight bearing leg. And lengthen. Good. And turn. Pivot on your right heel and open. Feel the stillness, feel the motion. The energy is excited and excitable. We're not looking for equilibrium here. We're looking for a dynamic interplay of energies. Step in, 
if width reach with your elbows reach with your knee one boom boom sink into your core yeah, very soon body returns to stillness the feel the activity that's going on Feeling the balls of the feet. You allow the earth chi to come up to the young tron points, the bubbling well. It rises. And it mixes with your, your body, animates your body, gives you that support and foundation, calmness. The yang chi of the heavens comes down to the, the crown and exits through the balls of the feet. And then it animates, excites, and expands. And so we're gradually increasing our tolerance of the big chi. So we're not just dependent on our own limited resources but we're able to plug into that more universal source to the degree we can tolerate it. And step in. Take a deep breath. Slowly press down, sink as you do, and imagine you're pushing down a big column of energy, like a big plunger, pushing down and clearing all the chi, creating space for the nature chi to come in. dissolve into the stillness, the emptiness. Feel into that notice your mind is clear. Have a seat. Mm. How'd that go? Scott. Well, 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 um, you know, focusing on the, the stillness, the, the stillness and the movement was just, wow, that was really, really, really powerful. And um, clearing, you know, normally when I clear, yeah, I fill right back up. But when I cleared this time, I, I literally, you know, cleared and filled back up at the same time. It was just like immediate. I've never had that experience before. It was pretty mm. beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Thanks. Good stuff. Great. Anybody else? How'd it go for people? Was Best I felt in a long time. What's that? Best you felt in a long time. Good. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Great. So uh, that is that uh, the idea of the um, stillness in motion. Is that uh, that. Does that resonate for people? 
Good. Great. Okay, so let's uh, let's take that and uh, do do something else with it. So, uh, why don't you stand up? All right, so let's, uh, we've done these uh, foundation exercises before. So I want you to begin with your feet together and then step out. And really find that still point. Feel the balls of your feet. Reach with the knee one, open the jade pillow gate. Reach with the elbows, the fingers. And Sung Kwa, feel yourself sinking down. Bring your hands up, reach with the wrists. Stop right there, just feel their arms reaching with the wrists. Fingers are hanging. And just feel into that. Reach with your elbows, opening the shoulder joints. Feel the chi in your arms and your hands, fingers. And bring your hands up, rotate the palms so they're facing you. So your elbows, you want to set your elbows in your your forearm should be about a 45 degree angle, give or take. You want to maintain all those, the other principles there, the knee one, the, the balls of the feet. But now you're going to rotate the forearms. We're going to do this nice and slow, just like we did with the arms down. So you reach, as you turn, you reach with the thumbs as if the thumbs are pulling the hands into position. When you rotate back, reach with the little fingers. Notice that your shoulders are not involved in this process. Reach with the thumbs. You're pivoting at the elbow. Reach with the little finger. And pause there a moment, just feel into that. Feel into the stillness, feel the motion. Feel the energy excited and excitable. Notice your mind, how clear it is. The gap between thoughts. Rotate, thumbs. Feel those index fingers too. You want to feel the energetic coherence as you do this. And the little fingers reaching with, you're kind of pivoting around those, those index fingers. Rotate. And little fingers. Good. Bring your hands down. And just feel into the feel into the hands and notice the the increase in activity. Not just in the hands, it's throughout the whole body now. Feel, feel the pulsing in your feet. Feel the heat being generated. Good. Now bring your hands up, reach with the wrists. The 
bring your right hand down under the uh, down to the dantian. Reach out with your left and bring your right hand up to center line as your left hand comes down. Get to come up to the chest height and then reach out, press out, open. Body turns as you reach and then the left hand comes up from the Dantian, right hand presses down, reach out. Feel the connection between your hands. Both hands are active. The left hand is yang, the right hand is yin. But now the left, right hand becomes yang as it comes up the center line. The left hand becomes yin. As you reach out. Left hand up the center line, drawing the water element up to the chest where it meets with the fire and reach out with the fire and the fire comes up. We're getting a turbine here. Pause, just feel into that. Feel the potentiality in this posture. Even though we've, we've stopped the movement, there is this potentiality that's building up there. It's like pulling back on a bowstring and activate. Good. And bring your hands down. And as you stand here, just press down lightly with your big toes. Reach with your index fingers. So we're, in this moment, we're heightening the coherence of the system even more. It's an insubstantial thing, but it, in this state, it's quite palpable. Hands come up, reach out. Now both hands come down, sink. Both hands come up and reach out and hold. Feel into that. Press down. And hold here. Just feel the potentiality of this. Feel the motion and stillness. Like the hawk ready to, to pounce, to dive, and reach. Down. 
Sink into your right. Step in. Deep breath. And press down and clear. Dissolve into the empty. Dissolve into the insubstantial. Take a moment to visit the source. Great. Okay. Take a seat. Well, how was that? Good, good, good. Any questions, thoughts? Any well, just thank you. Thank you. This was great, uh, Rick. I participated a little bit toward the end. And uh, I really appreciate your approach. And thank you, everybody. Wonderful. Thank you for coming, Peter. You're welcome anytime. It cool. struck me that uh, being and being and doing is very similar to moving and not moving. <laughs> good. Good. Yes. Yes. There are co there's a correlation there. Lynn. So I kind of hate to admit this because I feel like I shouldn't have this, but um, when I'm doing it and I'm all filled up, right? And then we um, like, you know, bring the hands up and I'll have a moment where I get cold. Like everything is still full, but I get cold. And then I warm up again and then we might move again and then I will get cold for just a moment. And it, it feels like the chi is still- While you're moving or while you're in stillness? Uh, while I'm moving. More That's, than while I'm in stillness, yeah. Yeah. What do you think that is? Um, I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel like- the chi is gone, right? Um, but so I can't, I can't quite identify what it is. And I, ideally, one doesn't get cold when the one's in the midst of doing this. Well, that's not true. <laughs> not true. It, it, there yeah, are, are many the ideal after all. What he said. What he said. <laughs> Master Young talked about wolf energy and how not only is it it's it's cold and cruel is <laughs> as wolf energy and and it uh and it's cold and cruel and uh, he said that it's it's the energy that if you're if you are creating this wolf energy that if someone were to pass by you you would notice them starting to to, to 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 try to warm up because they would be you know it would be so so pronounced so the uh, uh, i don't say that that's what is what you're experiencing exactly but i'm just giving it as an example of the myriad manifestations of the chi yes but don't get uh, don't get stuck in like oh chi is always hot no it's mm -hmm. it's that's whenever there's an abundance of it that uh, more than your wiring can handle, right. then you'll experience that, that heat because that's your body's response to, hey, I gotta do something with this. I gotta, I gotta empty this out here. So, it, uh, so that's, uh, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's the heat part, but there are many other variations on, on the energy. 
Yeah. Another thing I've heard about the cold when when you're doing polarity is it's a healing thing. Mm. Uh, when the chi is going to whatever it needs to work on healing, uh, you, you might be a little cold. Okay. So Maria said that it's also can also be a healing thing cold. that your your body is is using the energy to create a a healing condition in your uh, you know, and so it uh, it can get cold then too. Valerie. Um, I don't know if it's going to make Lynn feel any better, but I experienced the same thing. I mean, while we were doing the, these particular series of uh, exercises, the bubbling well was bubbling. I mean, to the point of where I'm bubbling, you know, <laughs> it's not, it's not muscle fatigue or that kind of shaky it's just a bubbling up so I know I've got lots of stuff going on and I'm glad she asked that question because right. I thought maybe am I thinking too much you know am I in my head and that's why I get that cold um so I'm glad she asked that question um right. so yay good yay and that, that makes it safe for everybody whenever we start to share like this because we're exploring some stuff. This stuff That's is right. not written about a lot. It's 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 you know it's handed down, you know, from teachers. But it's, it, that, even that is kind of limited by their experience. I just happen to have spent you know twenty plus years with uh, Master Young, so he and he's got you know a, a, a lifetime of practice plus generations of his family tradition to draw upon so i he's able to give me these little little insights that wouldn't you're not going to find in a book anywhere <laughs> so, uh, richard you had something um i just wanted to comment about something that i noticed occasionally which I, I think is very positive feedback and i noticed it particularly today when we were rotating at the elbow with our hands out in front of us, leading with the thumb, leading with the yep. little finger, I noticed that the that the rotation required just the tiniest bit of um, intention with the finger or the thumb, and the arm rotated through space virtually without effort. Beautiful. Um, so I'm, I think that I'm starting to experience some of the effortless movement. Beautiful. So that's what we mm -hmm. call chin. What you're, what you're describing there that, oh, it's, it just happened. And, you know, we can't do it over, over, the, uh, over the wire here, but uh, you would be amazed at how much effective power you're able to generate with that, with that slight, slight bit of effort. Uh, yeah, that's just what I was. That's just what I was wondering because I was very aware that it was effortless movement, and I was curious as to whether that was also effortless power. So. It is. Yeah. So it's it's a tremendous amount of of effective power that gets generated with a very slight movement. You know, you can, you know, just a, a slight turn like that. Something that you can't do muscularly. It, but mm -hmm. you, you do that, and it's uh, anybody who's worked with me for uh, you know on this particular thing can can attest to the uh, how uh, how you know it, it's shocking how much effective power you can get out of that 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 little bit of gin there. Yes, <laughs> Stan knows. <Yes. those. laughs> I agree. I agree. Oh, I, I'd like to make a comment on this too. Uh, Rick, am I coming through? Yes. Okay. Uh, it, it, it only seemed to have appeared more towards the very end when we uh, started bringing our arms up and then out. Not only am I feeling it in the arm, but I'm, it's almost as if I'm feeling outside. There's like a movement or something like that. Is that swimming in the air? So the question is, you're feeling something on the outside of the arm as well? Yeah, and the outside, it's almost like there's a certain amount of movement or something going past or whatever. Uh, it's like there. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, 
all I can say is that a lot of cool stuff is happening. Yes, I which, agree. <laughs> of which we have names for just, you know, this that much of it. And mm -hmm. uh, what we're, by establishing these practices, these safe practices, we then can have uh, points of orientation and then we can kind of like organize information around those. Mm. We say, oh, we can, we can recreate this. And also the fact that they have demonstrable physical universe applications. Mm. So when I go like that, you know, it's very difficult to, to hold that, hold that back. You know, some I've, I've done it with lots of people with, you know, both hands. Yes. And, you, know, you just poof like that and 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 it, it's a shocking amount of power so uh having that as a confirmation that indeed there is something happening here yes it's not just you know fantasy world it's not make it up club it's uh it's cool stuff you know it's demonstrable <laughs> and we want to keep that we want to keep that going great cool thank you okay Thank you all so much. Oh, Scott, you have one more thing? Yeah, I just had a quick comment about um, when you were, you know, telling us to feel the, you know, potential and everything else. Every, I felt every, like every cell, even small and every cell in my body was ready to move in any direction at once. It was fabulous. Most, most interesting fabulous. thing. Yeah. Good. That's what we're looking for, kids. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're, just like you're, that. It's revved up and ready to go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> great on that note great love you all Thanks.